Hi, this is Stan Lyle with Master Math. During the lesson, you're going to come to some You Try It slides where you're asked to do problems that relate to the lesson. Hit your pause button, try the problem, and then hit the forward key to move on to the answer. I hope you have a really good time today. Today we're going to talk about the number line and the coordinate plane. And since both the number line and the coordinate plane use negative numbers, it's real important that you feel comfortable with negative numbers. And a lot of kids don't. So let's discuss negative numbers. What is a negative number? Well, the easiest way to understand a negative number is probably with an example. So let's try an example or two. Here's one. You have no money and you want to go to the movies. Your dad agrees to lend you $10 and you spend every penny of it on tickets and popcorn. How much money do you have now? Well, if you reached in your pocket, you'd have no money. You'd have zero dollars in your pocket. Does that mean that you now have zero dollars? Well, ask your dad about that. He'd say, you don't have zero dollars. You've got less than zero dollars. You owe me ten dollars. You don't have zero dollars, you've got minus ten dollars. Or how about this one? The temperature was six degrees, but a cold front arrived and the temperature dropped by sixteen degrees. What's the temperature now? Well, let's look at this on a number line. We could plot that initial temperature of six degrees. We could go to the positive side of the number line and put a dot at six. Now the temperature is going to drop by 16 degrees. That means it's, we're subtracting 16 degrees. We're moving towards the negative numbers. Well, first we need to move six numbers to get to zero. We've used six of the 16 degrees that we're subtracting just to get back to zero. That means that we got 10 more degrees to go. We've used six of the 16 there's 10 more to go. We have to go 10 more spaces to the left. And we up, end up on minus 10. Did you realize that every number has an opposite number? That's right. 14 has an opposite number. Minus 14 is the opposite of 14. Why is minus 14 the opposite of 14? Well, it's because they cancel each other out. If I added 14 and minus 14, that's the same thing as subtracting 14 from 14, and 14 minus 14 equals 0. They've canceled each other out. You're back to the origin. We could look at this on a number line as well. Now, on a number line, the 0 which is usually in the middle of the number line, is called the origin. And all the numbers to the right of the origin are positive numbers, and they're getting bigger as we go further from the origin. And all the numbers to the left of the origin are negative numbers, and they're getting smaller as we go further to the left from the origin. Now we could plot positive 14 on this number line. We just go out to the 14 and the positive side and we put a dot there. And we could plot minus 14. It would be 14 on the negative side of the number line. Now our positive 14 is 14 units away from the origin. The absolute value of 14 is 14 and that absolute value means the distance of the number from the origin. Minus 14 is minus 14 steps away from the origin. And the absolute value of minus 14 is 14. That's the distance of minus 14 from the origin. An absolute value is the number without a negative or a positive sign in front of it. All absolute values are positive. 
we can plot any number on a number line. We can plot fractions on a number line. We can plot decimals on a number line. We can plot integers on a number line. And that number line will help us understand the relative worth of each of these numbers. Well, let's plot some numbers on a number line. Let's say that X equals the number of nickels in your pocket. Well, let's make it the number of nickels in my pocket. Let's see, how many do I? I've, I've got three nickels in my pocket. So X equals three. And we could plot that on a number line. We could go to the number line, find the positive three, and put a dot right there. And we'd see we were three units from the origin. We could also plot a value Y. We'll call Y the value of the nickels in your pocket. Well, it's my pocket, and I've got three nickels, and each of them is worth five cents, so three times five is 15. My Y value is 15. And I could plot that on a number line. I just put a little green dot out there at 15. So I've got two number lines that graphically demonstrate where 3 is and where 15 is. Would it be helpful if I could combine these two number lines so that I understood a little bit better about the relationship between X and Y? Well, a lot of people think so, and you're going to be doing this the rest of your math career, so I guess it's important to both of us. Let's look at a coordinate plane. A coordinate plane is just a couple of number lines that have been combined. We have an x-axis that runs horizontally, and it's just a number line. And then we get our y-axis, and it's the same y number line that we had up above, except we've turned it 90 degrees. Now we've lined these two number lines up so that the zero on the x-axis is at the zero on the y-axis. We call that the origin, where the x-axis and the y-axis cross, the x-value is zero, and the y-value is zero. Now we could plot our value of three on the x-axis. And I've done that with that little green dot. We could also plot our value of y, which was 15. But we could also combine those two. We could create one dot that represented the x value and the y value. This one dot would represent how much money you had if you had three nickels in your pocket. We could take that x value and go up to the level of the y value, 15, and then we could take the y value and take it to the right until we reach the value of the x, or 3, and we could put a dot right there. And that would be at the ordered pair 315. An ordered pair is a description of a point on a coordinate plane and we put within brackets the x value and then a comma and then the y value. 315 identifies the point on the coordinate plane where x equals 3 and y equals 15. Now there's some terms that we use to describe the coordinate plane. We've learned the ordered pair. An ordered pair is a position on the coordinate plane. The ordered pair has two numbers in it, and the first number is the x value of the point, and the second number is the y value of the point. There's a couple of other ways we can describe the portions of a coordinate plane. You'll notice that there's really four sections to this coordinate plane. There's this section up here, and then this section over here, and this section over here, and then a fourth section there. And we label those, or we call those quadrants 1, quadrant 2, quadrant 3, and quadrant 4. And we start in the upper right-hand corner, and we move counterclockwise until we've named all the quadrants. So you've got 1, 2, 3, and 4. Now each of those coordinates is a little bit different. In quadrant one, our x values 
are they positive or negative? Well, they're to the right of the origin, so they're all positive x values. Every x value in quadrant 1 is a positive number. How about our y values? Well, they start at 0 and go up. Every y value in quadrant 1 is a positive number. So, our ordered pairs in quadrant 1 are a positive x and a positive y. How about quadrant 2? Well, our x values in quadrant 2 are negative values. We start at the origin and we go down towards the smaller numbers. And our x or our y values are still positive. So in quadrant 2, our ordered pairs have a positive, excuse me, have a negative x and a positive y. In quadrant 3, we have negative y's and negative x's. So our ordered pairs are a negative x and a negative y. And in quadrant 4, we're back to positive x's, but we've got negative y's. So our ordered pairs in quadrant 4 are a positive x and a negative y. If we subtract 12 from the number represented on this number line, what number do we get? And where does it fall on the number line? Well, the number that we've represented on the number line is 0. Now if we're going to subtract 12 from 0, that means we're going to go to the left towards the smaller numbers, towards the negative numbers, and we're going to go 12 spaces to the left. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. And we could plot that number right there. That would be 0 minus 12, which equals minus 12. What ordered pair is shown on this coordinate plane? Well, you remember that an ordered pair is two numbers in brackets, and the first number describes the x-coordinate, and the second describes the y-coordinate. So if we want to find out what the ordered pair that describes this point is, we have to figure out how far from the origin, in terms of x values and then in terms of y values, this dot is. How far is this dot from the origin? Well, let's do our x's first. We've got to go to the left 9 units to catch up to that dot. We're going to go minus 9 from the origin to get to the level of the dot on the x-axis. So our x values, minus 9. And then we've got to go up 5 units to get to the point on the y-axis where the dot is. We're going to go up positive 5. So the ordered pair for that dot is an x-value of minus 9 and a y-value of positive 5. Or the ordered pair is minus 9, 5. Plot these ordered pairs on the coordinate plane. If you connect the points, what shape have you drawn? Well, we've got three points, three ordered pairs to plot. The first one is minus 2, 0. Minus 2, that's the x value. So we're going to start at the origin, and we're going to go 2 to the left, into the negative numbers. Now we've got to figure out what the y value is, and it's 0. 0 means we stay right there. We don't go up, we don't go down. We stay right at the x-axis, and we'll place a dot right there. Now the second 
ordered pair is 10, 0. Well, the x value is 10, so I start at the origin. I start at 0, and I move 5, 10 numbers to the right. Now, my y value is 0, so that means I don't go up and I don't go down, I stay where y equals 0. y equals 0 right there at the origin. So 10, 0 would be right there, and I'll put a dot right there. And my third ordered pair is an x value of minus 2 and a y value of 8. So I start at the origin, and I go 2 to the left till I get to minus 2. And then it's a positive 8, so I'm going to go up on the y-axis to 8. Then I'm going to put a dot right there. Now, if I were to connect those dots, I'd have a right triangle. Well, that's our lesson on the number line and the coordinate plane. Now it's time to test your skills. Go to www.mastermath.info and download the worksheet on the number line and the coordinate plane and try your luck there. There's an answer sheet which you can look at after you've tried the worksheet and you can correct any mistakes you make. After you've done the worksheet, go back to Master Math and try the quiz on the number line and the coordinate plane. I hope you learned a lot and I hope we see you again real soon.